and it will cost them only a dollar per month to use our subscription service per chip. So, so I think it's, a, I'm sorry. Uh, in the RFOD final line, just from preventing fraud in, like stolen credit card, uh, banks spending like millions of dollars to investigate that, just for that little portion. Yeah, I think I think there's there's your opportunity, right? Is that you know if you're going to sell this concept to a bank, you've got 440 million cards out there. Let's say conservatively 10% of them, there's a $10 problem. You do the math on that. Now all of a sudden you're talking to a bank in terms of pain relief for them, and and therein lies you know that by the way that's. Uh, that's a recurring problem or maybe escalating problem. So you look at it in one year, but what has what the trend been over the last three or four years around that same problem? And you begin to really uh, put into monetary terms, you know, the value proposition and the immediacy of, of the issue for the bank, right? Um, so. If you look on um, our year three and show you the um, amount that we expect a 1.5, no, 150% growth from year two. So we just expect to keep growing because there's going to be more credit cards issued, more laptops being produced, and more key cards. So, um, part of the, so back on to his uh, point here. I think that, uh, so if you just try to expand a little bit about the pain point. It costs a dollar to for the banks to create an actual physical credit card. It costs anywhere from four to seven dollars overall, to include the packaging, personalization, marketing, all the stuff rolled in total to send out a card. So if you sort of take that figure, multiply it by the number of cards that are lost and need to be replaced, it's an enormous, enormous number. Um, another point uh, I want to draw on this too much, but um, so you, you're saying going from year two to year three, um, year two you have about 110,000 revenues, year three you'll have about 120 million. Is that about right? Yeah. Um, so that might be a, a little fast. Uh, I think there's only one company that I've, that I can recall has gone from about zero to 100 million revenues in one year. Uh, that was compact. So that, you know. Just to take that with a grain of salt. Yeah. Um, a, a venture investor might see that and, and and be a little skeptical. And so, just to preserve your own credibility, if you reduce the uh, ramp of your revenues, um, let's say you reduce it to thirty million, and fifty million, and eighty million, and hundred, or however you want to do it. Uh, in the first year, you get a hundred million, to, or you get sixty million revenues. It looks great, right? Because you doubled your projections. But if you Project that you're going to get 120 million and you only hit 60. Uh, it looks like you don't, you didn't know what you were talking about. Mm -hmm. So just a, it's a really good to set expectations for investors um, because it'll lend to your credibility. Um, so another question, taking a step back for a second, how does this specifically work? Uh, I see you have an RF chip. Is this also going to tie into a cellular network? This thing gets lost, or is this just going to tie into your um, always be around your phone and use that phone cellular network? So um, um, we got a partner with uh, S5 technology. They will set up um, a little radio frequency station, like cell phone station, and then they will um, uh, track the tag and then send all the data to the location and tell them the system. And then send it to the network where we will um, uh, take out the data from that network and put it on our website. So the base, they're going to set up base stations around, like, let's say this is for San Francisco, they'll set up multiple base stations around San Francisco. And so, but if someone actually drives out of the city, then they won't be covered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So we plan to expand our network as we get more customers. Have you thought about maybe partnering or using one of the wireless WAN chips or using the cellular network like uh, Verizon or AT&T? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You just with the cell phone company. So. And maybe use their radio time. So you guys thought about uh, Besides the, the big pain point from the banks losing a lot of sense of info, uh, tapping into the individual consumer's pain, because if I've been either been robbed or I lost a cell phone or lost a credit card, 
um, how much do you think the individual consumers willing to pay for a service like this? Is that an additional revenue opportunity for you versus just selling it straight through the financial institutions? That was what we were originally going to do, but then we decided that there's a better market for businesses because they have a lot more money to spend and a lot more to protect. Right. The businesses will probably add on a little more, little more price just because they're never going to lose anything anymore. Probably not too much, but it's a little price just because their partnership will have happen. Right. And do you think they would, is there a, I guess, a, a reseller opportunity? Do you think they would try to make money? Because I can see a, a Bank of America charging extra for this service. Uh, even though the chip is already on my on my ATM card, Bank of America would say, well, for an extra two fifty a month, you get this extra service. And do you think that um, instead of Bank of America making that money, why not your company make, make that money? Yeah, it's an, it will be in our contract that we, um, that we have in our partnership. It wouldn't be too fifty to be the way that's you know, And do you, do you have a sense for what that price is and whether the, the, the consumer market will bear that price? Um, we plan to just charge a dollar per month that's, is that the price that the bank pays you or what the end consumer well, pays the bank? The consumer pays us. Pays you direct. Mm -hmm. okay. And then does well, the bank get any of that or is it? The bank gets the satisfaction of uh, security and keeping the customer. Okay. What bank would you go to first? Still standing. <laughs> <laughs> Which one, and why would you go there? Because you stand. What's that? No, um, because I believe that Bank of America. I uh, myself, I also use Bank of America, and um, I see a lot of customers like go and like, actually sign up for Bank of America, and more than you know, bank growth or something. A few months ago, they bankrupt or something. Some of the bank have like shut down and. Um, I still see that Bank of America is still standing today. They are strong and they make they be making a lot of money. So we should go to Bank of America first. And they owe a lot of money also because they're still standing. But we will help them save some money for they owe. Where do you guys stand? Okay. Pretty good. Pretty good. Our company is called uh, product and company is called I Anywhere. You can see by our logo. The holding company is actually called Infinitech. Infinite solutions, infinite possibilities for your uh, technical problems. Our slogan and tagline for I Anywhere is save money equals save the planet. And vice versa. Saving the planet means saving money. My name is Alexis Lulo, CEO and CTO of I Anywhere. And I'm COO and my name is June. Oh, um, yeah, well, Hi, my name is Aruj, and I'm CMO. Not purpose. Keyword here is to revolutionize. Revolutionize the college technics industry. Things are going digital. It is inevitable. You cannot deny that. Sooner or later, someone's going to capture this market, and it should be us. <laughs> okay? It's a $3.4 billion market, and we're here to help students, schools, and publishers capture this market, save money, and go green by digitizing college textbooks. Simple and clear. And green. We're here to produce an efficient system for publishers to distribute digital textbooks to the schools and students, again, on an online system. Now, we have a lot of problems here. Number one, publishers. Publishers lose revenue, it's a, it's a lost revenue stream in the used textbooks. How do the publishers make money? They make money by how? New textbooks only, which is 66% of the market. The used market is that other, the 33%. That's approximately 1.1, 1.2 billion dollars of lost revenue. Which publisher would not want to join this? Manufacturing costs, shipping, it's wasteful, it's inefficient. The current model today for, for college textbooks, and many of us here are college students, it is wasteful. It is not green. And again, the publishers want to go green. They need to go green. It's pretty much the slogan for any other company, again, for their company, the Prius, to go green. 